We continue now at the top of Daf Nun Gimel Amad Aleph from Maseches Baba Basra. This is Baba Basra Daf Fifty Three A. And the previous Amad the Gemara was discussing whether a Kenyan Chazaka needs to be done befonov, meaning needs to be done in front of the mocher, in front of the seller, or not. And Rava makes the following distinction. Rava says that if it's done befonov, then there's no need for the seller to say Lech Chazeku Kani, go make a Chazak and make a Kenyan. Whereas Shalom befonov, if it's not done in front of the seller, meaning the Kenyan Chazaka, that physical act is not done in front of the seller, so. Then So then we say that the seller does need to tell the buyer, go make a chazak and be kona this field, otherwise it is not going to be a Kenyan. And the Gemara continues, Boy Rav, Rav asks the following question, Matana heich, what's the halacha when it comes to a matana, to a gift? Do you have to say lech chazek o kani in that situation? And the Gemara continues, Amar Shmuel, Shmuel says, Mighty boy leila Abba, what is Abba's question over here? Again, Rav's name was Abba. Hashta na'u, ma mecher de kayoiv le'zuze, if in a situation of a sale, where the buyer is actually giving money, iomar lei lech chazek o kani in, ilo lo, if he tells him lech chazek o kani, again in a situation where it's shalom b'fanav, so then we say it's a kinyan, otherwise we say it's not a Kenyan. So Matana, so when it comes to a gift where there's no money even being given by the recipient, local shikane, so isn't it certainly true that you need to say Lech Chazeku Kani? Why is Rav even asking this question by Matana? But the Gemara continues, Rav suffer, but Rav holds Man de Yoiv Matana, somebody who gives a gift Be'ein Yofa Yoiv, he's giving it generously, and so therefore it could be by Matana specifically, you don't need to say Lech Chazeku Kani, even though by a sale you do need to say Lech Chazeku Kani. And the Gemara continues, Vekam Kolshu, it says that when you make a Kenyan Chazaka, so it's Noel Gadar Paratz Kolshu. He locks it, he fences it in, or he breaches the fence. If he does it Kolshu, even a small amount, that is a Kenyan Chazaka. So the Gemara wants to know Kama Kolshu. How much is a Kolshu? What's the minimum that needs to be done for a Kenyan Chazaka? And the Gemara answers Kedish Shmuel. It's like Shmuel says, the Yomar Shmuel, because Shmuel says, Gadar Gedr Vihishlimu Let's say you have a fence, but now he completes the fence that it's now 10 Tvachim high. That would be an example of Kolshu. Uparatz Pirza Kedesh Ikonis Vietzebor. Let's say you have an opening, a breach in the fence, and he opens it a little more in order that now people can go in and go out through that breach. So if he does that, Harezu Chazak. If he does that, that's considered to be a Chazak. But the Gemara continues, Hai Gedr Hechidami. But let's say this fence, when he's adding to the fence, what exactly was the situation? If you're going to say that originally, in terms of the fence, they couldn't get through, now that he made the fence a little higher, they're still not able to get over the fence. So So then what did he do? Then he did nothing. That should not be a Kenyan Chazaka. Viela, rather, you're going to say, Kara have a Originally, the fence was not high enough. People were able to go right over the fence. And now, they're not able to go. Now the fence is actually functioning. But in that case, Tuva of it, in that case, he's doing a lot. That shouldn't be called Kolshu. There, the person did something that was very significant. And so the Gemara answers, Lo no tzrich. It's necessary to make Kara have a Salki la Baravcha. Originally, it was very easy to go to get by the fence, Vahashta. But now, Kasalki la Bedochka. Now it's a little bit harder. And so, therefore, that's a Kolshu. There's some improvement in that situation. Situation. And again, that's going to be sufficient for a chazaka. And the Gemara continues along the same lines. Hi, dummy when you have this breach in the fence. So again, you're making this breach, and now people are able to get through the breach. Again, what exactly is the circumstance? Elaimed to make kara have aili If you're going to say originally they were able to get in, vahashdanami aili Now also they can get in. So my So then what do you do? He did nothing. Viel rather you'll say to make kara lo have aili that originally they weren't able to get in, vahashdaka aili and now they are able to get in. But then tuva avet. Then he's doing something that's very significant. Again, that's not going to be a kolshu. And so the Gemara answers, Lo no tzrich, it's necessary to make kara have aili babidochka, that originally they were able to get through, but it was difficult. Bahashta aili babaravcha. But now it's very easy to get through. So again, that would be the example of a kolshu. And the Gemara continues, Amar Ravasi, Amar Rav Yochanan. Ravasi says that Rav Yochanan says, Nasan tzror v'hoel, if he placed a stone and that was beneficial in some way to the field, or not al tzror v'hoel, let's say he took away a stone and that was beneficial in some way to the field, harezu chazaka, that would be considered to be a chazaka. And the Gemara says, my nasan umay natal, what exactly does this mean, that he placed a stone, he took away a stone? Ilemo nasan tzror v'sachar maya if you're going to say that he placed a stone and that stopped the, the field from being flooded, or the other way around, not al tzror v'apik maya I mean, let's say he took away a stone and therefore the water flowed out of the field. It was no longer flooding. So that's a person who's essentially chasing a lion away from the property of his friend. Meaning to say, if a person does something to prevent their neighbor's property from being destroyed, from being damaged, that's 
that's actually something that a person should do. That should not be a chazaka. That's something you should do even with your neighbor's property. And so therefore, again, that should not create any kind of chazaka. So Ella, rather, what it is is as follows. Nasan sror did summit alamaya. The case of putting a stone there is you put a stone and you caused water to be able to stay gathered there for irrigation purposes. Now it was something that was beneficial. It wasn't just preventing damage. Or not al sror, let's say he took away a stone, va'arvich lamaya, and that allowed water to flow in to irrigate the field. So again, in those situations, you're doing something for the benefit of the field. That would be a Kenyan chazaka. Again, it's not simply mavriya chari. It's not simply causing that there shouldn't be a damage happening to the field. And the Gemara continues, Rav Ravasi, Yom Rav Yochanan, Rav Asi said that Rav Yochanan said, Shtei Sados, let's say you have two fields, who made Sir Echad Beinayim, and you have a kind of boundary that is between them. Hechzik Ba'achas Mehen, if he does a chazak in one of the fields, Liknos, in order to acquire that particular field. So Kana, then he acquires that particular field, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video. And Daphnon Gimel, Ahmed Beis.